It's the Don Shula Show. Live from Don Shula's All-Star Cafe, here's 10-team sports director, Jimmy Cephalo. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Don Shula's All-Star Cafe. It's time for the Coaches Show. And another wonderful win for your football team yesterday. 4-0, the only undefeated team in the NFL. You know, it, it's really hard for me to believe after only five weeks of the season that uh, we're the only undefeated team. Uh, we're happy about that, 4-0. But to think that both Dallas and uh, the Rams got knocked off yesterday, it really it tells you a lot about what competitive balance is in this league and the teams that you face each and every week. I mean, we, we found that out in preseason. And then in the regular season, we started out with uh, three great wins. And then in the game yesterday against Cincinnati, that uh, they are a much better football team than they were a year ago at this time. And uh, it was a great win for us, and especially the way that we won it with the come-from-behind uh, patented Dan Marino march down the field. A devastating loss for Dave, and uh, there is no way that, uh, that anybody can understand unless you've gone through a situation like that. Uh, last year he was close a lot of times and and didn't come up with the W's and yesterday uh, that would have been a, the greatest win certainly of his coaching career but it, it, it didn't happen and fortunately for us uh, we were able to make the plays when we had to make them and their field goal kicker uh, missed the field goal that would have put him into overtime and it was it, all the odds were against the Miami Dolphin football team yesterday when there was uh, just a couple minutes left to go in the football game 91 yards away stood Dan Marino in a very noisy stadium in Cincinnati it all culminated with the play coach that you've chosen for your sports authority chalk talk right this is a touchdown pass and uh, you know th they had good coverage on this play but OJ McDuffie is in the slot over there we got four wide receivers and We've got a, a double slant pattern on the strong side or down below here with a fullback coming out. We've got Fryer running a slant pattern, and O.J.'s running a diagonal pattern to the sideline, hoping the defensive back will jump on that. And uh, as you can see, the defensive back has good coverage. And as O.J. turns it up the field, the ball's in the air, but it looks like the defensive back's in position to make the play. But here's where the winners stand out, and O.J. makes a great, great catch. Into the end zone for the touchdown. Now, did, did coach, did, did Dan Marino underthrow that ball purposely so that OJ could come back on it? I think that when Dan saw that the defensive back had such good coverage on OJ that he threw it the only place that he felt that OJ had a chance of making the play, and that's back over the uh, the back of the defensive back, and OJ had to go up and take it away from him. The, o the defensive back, I think, felt that Dan was going to lead him further down the field, but it was the the throw that had to be made in that situation. And the catch, uh, this is where the true winners uh, stand out. And I can't say enough about O.J. McDuffie and what he's meant to our football team since he's been here. He's our go-to guy, the first, first down guy, the money player for us. And it came at the right time yesterday. Sure did. Tough catch by McDuffie. The Dolphins win the football game. We'll come back in just a moment. We'll meet the coach's guests right after this on the Don Shula Show. Well, Monday night's the place to be here at Dodgeless All-Star Cafe. Sure looks like it from those pictures. Coach, as you said before, uh, big plays. That's what's win football games. And the three gentlemen you brought tonight made a lot of big plays for you, both on and off the field as well. Well, we got uh, O.J. McDuffie to start with. And uh, O.J., tell us what it was like when the, when the drive started and the things that were going on there. I think that that's what everybody's interested in. Well, I tell you, you know, Dan has done such a great job of... Uh, <laughs> Over the years of guiding us to, uh, to a lot of strong comebacks like he's done many times, we had all the confidence in the world that he was going to be able to do it and that all the receivers would be uh, uh, up to the challenge as well. O.J., what was the, uh, the call? Was it the face mask call on you on the first down early in the drive? Yeah, definitely. Uh, he had a, a good grip on my face mask. It looked like he tried to take my head off, Coach. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, it looked like, uh, you know, it was a good call. The fans didn't like it very much, but it was definitely a good call. That was a 15-yarder that helped us get some pretty good field position. And by the way, we'll have that play a bit later on. And we're also joined by Gene Atkins, who is uh, a strong safety, a safety for this football team. who played very well yesterday, too. Gino, that uh, Cincinnati offense was everything that we had thought it would be. The uh, quarterback and the wide receivers are something special. It was that and more, Coach. You know, we kind of underestimated these guys, but um, they came out with a great um, game plan. They had a lot of speed and a good quarterback. Um, they just did some things to keep us off balance, and they, I, I, like I said, I take my hat off to them. And uh, we have Mike Westoff with us, our special teams coach, and 
Mike, the special teams were very special yesterday. It was one of those games where um, all of a sudden Pete was called upon to kick a lot of field goals, and consequently we, we had to kick off a number of times, and we, we've done a good job covering kicks, and we're able to keep them in the hole. We've got to try to get the ball to this guy a little more, to O.J. He came into this game as one of the leading kickoff returners in the league, and uh, teams are making it tough on us now and trying to kick away from it and everything else. So we're going to get him back into it and get everything in swing. I felt the uh, last couple of weeks, the Monday night game and the game yesterday, that Pete's kickoffs have been uh, much stronger, too, with better hang times. He, he, he did a good job. He hit the ball well. He hit it right to the spot where we asked him to. And uh, he took advantage of what wind there was yesterday. He took full advantage of it and, and did a good job. And then we mixed some schemes up and, and did a good job covering it. All right, it's a good football game yesterday in Cincinnati at Riverfront Stadium. Let's go right to the first half highlights. It began with the two coaches meeting at uh, center field coach. It's got to be a special moment for you every time you play. It the really Bengals. is. That, uh, there's a, a lot of pride there. Uh, last year was the first time it ever happened in professional sports and uh, very unique. And I was very excited about it this year. Uh, there wasn't near as much uh, publicity about it, uh, but it was still very special. Here's um, Randall Hill getting open on, on a, a long pass early in a ball game, and you know Randall has been frustrated. He hadn't dressed for a couple of the ball games, but he's kept working hard in practice, and you can see that paid off. That set up a field goal, 21 yards, Coach Mike Westa. Yeah, Pete did, a, Pete did an excellent job. So did the whole group, because there's. There's a lot that goes into it with snap and hold and protection and all the things that people give you, and it was it was well executed. Bengals' first offensive play, Marco Coleman puts the pressure on Jeff Blake, and he goes down. It's right. Really we had, uh, on that first series, it looked like defensively we were going to make it a long afternoon for him. We were swarming and playing great defense, and uh, and uh, they got on track later on. Here's Dan. Uh, first and 15 to uh, Gary Clark. Gary Clark had a fine day for us. He, uh, Eric Clark and uh, Eric Green all came through. Uh, and uh, Marino ends the drive, throws into a crowd. The ball is picked off, uh, bounce off Gary Clark's arms. That's what you thought, Coach? Right, it did bounce off. He, Dan hit him. He was uh, on the money with a throw, but Gary didn't have a chance to catch it and put it away, and it bounced up in the air, and the linebacker picked it off. So the frustration of um, our first drive getting down there and only three points, and then having another drive that ended up in, in an interception. Here's Eric Green. That uh, Eric the enemy, Harold Green, right? That, uh, that's Harold Green, exactly right. correct. 14 yards. Uh, J.B. Brown goes with him, and the Bengals capitalize and get into the end zone. The enemy with a strong run here. He's been a good addition to their team. He uh, was with San Diego last year, and they picked him up in the uh, offseason. Been a big help to him. And here's where the Bengals capitalize, get into the end zone off the play fake. Pickens, open for the touchdown. Gene Atkins. Is that a play that fooled most everybody defensively? Well, it did. It did a uh, good play fake. It drove me up in the middle. I'm thinking run. And it really faked the whole defense out. But um, it was just a good e execution on their, side, on their part. The Dolphins come back. And Marino to Terry Kirby. He breaks uh, free and keeps going. 46 yards downfield all the way to the Cincinnati 19-yard line. Dan had a lot of time on that play. And um, Terry was actually the secondary receiver on the play. We were looking for the deep ball to Fryer out there, but they had good coverage on it, and Terry came open and made a big play out of it. Here's Dan, and uh, he let this go right down to the wire here. He automatic at the line of scrimmage, and it went down to that final second, and that was it was tense because I didn't think they were going to get the, uh, the play off, but Dan got it off just as the uh, clock wound down and made the great throw to Eric Green, who got in between their defenders for the touchdown. Coach Westhoff, Dwayne Dotson uh, a with a great hit on the kickoff. We had a bunch of these. Just an excellent play by Dwayne Dotson and Sean Hill two guys that are young guys that have really come on and played well and you can see the enthusiasm and it's just the kind of thing we want to create and hopefully it carries on all right the uh, teams have changed field goals the Dolphins led at halftime by a score of 13 to 10 and this is a football game that seesawed back and forth we'll come back we'll take a look at the second half highlights we'll hear from OJ from Gene and Coach Westall right after this on the Don Shula Show And Dan Marino leads the drive that gives the Dolphins a uh, victory on Sunday afternoon against the Bengals in Cincinnati. Hey, Coach, you talked about it earlier. O.J. seems to make the big plays time after time again, whether it's third down play or a touchdown. There's got to be something that excites you, O.J., when these big plays come up just before the snap of the ball. Well, not too much. You know, I'm, I'm pretty calm and mild-mannered, and I don't get too excited about too many that, That's if we're throwing <laughs> you the ball. When the ball's coming my way, I'm all right. But, uh... 
But I, I get excited, uh, especially when my number is called. You got to get excited. You want the ball to be putting your hands in a key situation. And uh, when that opportunity arrives, I try to take full advantage of it. Because, you know, that's what makes uh, a difference between a player who's going to be a good one and just an average one. Isn't that's it? what we knew about O.J. in college. You know, when we when we scouted him out, we felt that he was a player that made plays. And uh, so that's why we took him in the first round. And he's come in here and he's made so many big plays for us. Uh, First downs and touchdowns. Yeah. Gene, let's uh, let's get back to, to the defense if we can for just a second. Uh, Jeff Blake played uh, a very good football game yesterday. Tell us about his credentials and what you were impressed about with Blake's performance. Well, he did. He, he brought something that we really didn't see, a, a quarterback that's sitting so much up under the center that you really couldn't read how he was coming out of his drops and all that kind of stuff. We thought that we could knock a lot of balls down from this guy, but um, he just did a good job of scrambling, getting out, getting out of a lot of trouble make, trying to make something happen and hey I think that he's, he's going to be one of the excellent quarterbacks in the National Football League and he dropped the ball into some very tight circumstances against some very good coverage and really proved to a lot of people that Jeff Blake is a quarterback for the future all right let's take a look at the third quarter highlights if we can the Bengals put the football away Miami on the drive uh, in Miami and Marino to Eric Green we have a, a real good drive here Eric Green really uh, comes into his own he had a couple of drop balls in the game but he also made some big catches for us and ran w well after the catch and did a good job of blocking another drive ends on the foot of Pete Stojanovic the third field goal of the day this one from 36 yards out Mike yeah Pete's another one we're gonna this will be fine when these are touchdowns though and they're gonna be that way soon but uh, whatever whatever has to happen we have to get in the end zone and he's required to step up and do it Pete's been just been outstanding over the years for us Bengals don't give up Eric Bietemi adds to his big day Almost after uh, bobbling the ball around the right side for a gain of 22 yards. Right, they had some uh, some runs that were uh, uh, quick hitters, and, and they caught us off balance. And I was very disappointed in our run defense. I didn't think that we uh, did as well as we're capable of doing. Here's Blake on a bomb to Pickens, and just a great throw, and he takes it away from Troy Vincent for the touchdown. You know, think about Blake coming out of college. People didn't think that he was tall enough. He's six foot tall. And they thought that that was too small for a pro quarterback. But you can see there that they, the height was the problem. He moves around, he finds passing lanes, and he puts the ball uh, right on the money. Here's a great catch by Irving Fryer. And this is where people have to rise to the occasion. When you have an opportunity like that, Dan put it in there, the only place he could throw it, and Fryer made the catch. He came up with some big catches. And that was a third and 11, a big one on the day. Then Pete... Uh, Kicks the field goal 35 yards away, and the Dolphins continue with the lead. Bengals come right back, though, into Miami territory. The pass to the enemy, and he'll pull his way uh, to the Dolphins' 24-yard line on the first down. He's a clever runner. He's uh, built low to the ground. He's tough to bring down. Blake and Pickens hook up one more time from 10 yards out the quick slant. He gets into the end zone for the score. All right, that's Pickens' third touchdown of the day, and uh, so, you know, going into the ball game, we felt that defensively that uh, we're definitely uh, coming along but uh, here's a two-point play that uh, they decided to go for the two-point play and uh, what Troy Vincent makes the play on Pickens there and and uh, that was uh, a big play for us at that time 23 to 19 was the score the Dolphins still had a chance Marino begins the great comeback drive almost ends early though when he's nearly called for grounding in the end zone your opinion coach well as he got out of the pocket you're allowed to throw the ball down as long as you throw it at or near the line of scrimmage and you're not going to get called for grounding and dan made a good throw as he got outside the pocket toward the line of scrimmage so here's the play oj where they call the 15-yard penalty yeah it was uh, we just ran a quick slant and a db was trying to make the tackle uh proved to be a little strong and he thought i'd be and he grabbed my face mask two plays later dolphins get another first down marina goes to the sideline hits Hill for 13 yards. Close play of the sidelines. David and the cameras believed that he was out of bounds. Yeah, I think David was really upset about that call after the ball game and talking to him. It was probably the thing that bothered him more than anything else. He felt that he was clearly out of bounds on the play. Dolphins moving closer, trying to get to the Bengals 19 with a nine-yard pass to Terry Kirby. Again, Terry Kirby's always there when you need him, and Dan moved around, looked down the field, had plenty of time, and got the ball to Kirby. Here Here's we go for the touchdown. The big play to O.J. in the corner. <laughs> O.J., any doubt in your mind that you're going to be able to take it away from him? Well, I tell you, the whole thing was, um, you know, when I heard the arrow takeoff coming from the sideline, it was a great call. Um, and my whole thought when I ran it was I thought he was going to bite hard on the out, and he didn't bite at all. Um, so it's just a matter of, uh, first of all, not letting him catch and then making the play after that. 
Bengals come back with another drive uh, to end the football game. Blake to Tony McGee. You yeah. get out of bounds and stop the clock, though. That's a big mistake Eight for the Eight seconds team. to go. Uh, when, when Blake completes uh, this pass here and puts him in field position, I think got a 43-yard field goal, Mike, is what they needed. This is a difficult kick. This was not an easy kick. We had good pressure from the outside right here, as you can see, but he pulled it and pulled it and didn't make it. It's a good young kicker that's going to make his share over time, but he just didn't make that one, and, and we were the winners of the game. If Duck Pelfrey misses, and uh, the two shoeless meet at uh, midfield and this is really tough because what do you say in a situation like that david uh, one time thought that that the game was under control and we came back with that great drive and then his kicker misses and keeps the, the game from going into overtime so it was a great win for us and we're happy to be 4-0 and 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 i'm sure that dave is going to survive the loss and they're going to beat some people this year in just the 30 seconds we've got left uh, let me ask you, what did you say to David when you first met him? Congratulations, it was a good football game. Well, I told him his team played hard and that, that you know, that he had to be proud of that. I said, I know how tough the loss is, and, and uh, there's no way that you can console anybody when they go through an experience like that. All right, OJ, Gene, Coach Westhoff, thanks so much for being the Thank coach's you. guest tonight. Thank you. Nice seeing you again. The best of luck for the rest of the way against the Colts on Sunday afternoon. We'll come back. We'll uh, wrap up the coach's thoughts for a Monday evening right after this on the Don Shula Show. Welcome back to the Don Chula Show. Uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes will be the Bills and the Browns uh, from Cleveland. A good football game there. It be a good one. It should be a very good one as well. Uh, by the way, uh, you know we've got an email system set up for you where you can call or write, email rather, <laughs> ask the coach a question. It's very simple. And if you wind up uh, being the question we choose on the Don Chula Show, you'll receive the coach's copy of Everyone's a Coach. And uh, we'll have that for you. We've got a question. Oh, we've got a big copy of the book, too, Coach. Hey. Whoa. It's, a, it's the big version of the book. What is that? I, it's Everyone's a Coach, and it's available at your bookstores right now. <laughs> All right, here's the question we have tonight. And Thomas Mahon will receive a copy of the book, Everyone's a Coach. And here's the question, Coach. Coach Shula, I'm a high school football assistant. Our sideline is often hectic and emotional at times too much. If you would, describe your sidelines. Now, how do you work it so everyone stays together? Ours is hectic and emotional. <laughs> but uh, seriously, we, uh, uh, it's tough to keep the players back, and it's also tough to keep the coaches back, including myself. When, when, when uh, there's a controversial play, you want to get out there and you want to express yourself. But we really have two coaches or assistant coaches assigned to keep the players back. Every team in the league has that. They're called get-back coaches. And they try to make sure that the players are back outside of that limit so that they're, they don't interfere with the officials as they're working the sideline. But during the course of the ball game, when, when everything is on the line and the, and the players are emotional, it's tough to keep them back. And John Gamble is your get-back coach, and he's as big and as good yeah, a dude uh, as I, I would definitely pay attention to John Gamble. Junior Wade also helps in that capacity, and what we try to do is to keep them back so that they... Uh, the, the players don't interfere with uh, any uh, calls that the officials have to make right on the sideline. All right, let's go uh, to Sunday's football game. We're going to play the Colts here at 4 o'clock. And, of course, the one player everybody's concerned about when they play the Colts is Marshall Falk. He had a great day against the Rams, and uh, he had a, about a nine-yard average running with the football. You can see here, and the Rams are a good defensive football team. And going into this ball game, they were one of the top teams against the run. But the Colts' offensive line really did a good job on him. And Marshall Falk is something special. You can see the great ability that he has. Quick feet, very powerful, great speed, and uh, he's just a big play man. He made such a difference in this Colts team when they drafted him number one and brought him in because he's able to put points on the board. And when they get down close, they give it to Marshall, and he makes plays for them. And previous to that, they had trouble getting into the end zone. And, of course, you've coached against Ted Barcherbro to time and time again. He uses Marshall Falk very well. He's also very innovative as an offensive mind. Yeah, one of the uh, outstanding coaches. Uh, he coached many, many years for the Buffalo Bills and that great offense up there. Then he took over as the Indianapolis head coach. And uh, he's got Lindy Infante with him, who is his offensive coordinator. And Lindy's been around. He was Cleveland's offensive coordinator with Marty Schottenheimer, and he's been around some very good offensive football teams. So they've got the personnel now. They're alternating their quarterbacks. They have uh, the two quarterbacks. Harbaugh is uh, is starting, and then the quarterback that they picked up from uh, 
Tampa Bay Erickson and uh, depending on who's going well is the quarterback that gets the playing time. All right, Coach, a good football game on Sunday afternoon. Congratulations on taking your record to 4-0. The only undefeated team in the NFL. And uh, next Sunday will be the Colts, 4 o'clock at Joe Robbie Stadium. The Dolphins trying to make it 5 in a row. The best of luck on Sunday Thank afternoon. Thank you, Jimmy. All right, that'll look for the Don Shula Show. Stay tuned. It'll be the Bills and the Cleveland Browns coming to you from Cleveland on Monday Night Football. So long, everybody. We'll see you again next Monday night for the Don Shula Show. Coach Hewlett and his guests receive gift certificates from Carol's Jewelers. From friendships to courtships, weddings and anniversaries, Carol's is the place for that someone special in your life. The Don Shula Show is a production of the Tinsley Sports Network, a division of Tinsley Advertising.